our scenario one is playing out guys i'm very happy very excited we are getting new entries in 2024 amazing i will make one small tweak of my scenario one today but first for new viewers i will recap what is scenario one from the video two weeks ago on january 9th before the etf approval when price was about 47,000, and most people had their laser eyes back on and i had a different main scenario as usual here's what i said if the bitcoin etf is approved this week i would be very surprised if there isn't at least a short-term pump which could carry this a little bit further on that excitement alone but and here's the point of this video then what What's going to happen when this starts trading? Are all the pension funds just going to start pouring in the billions in the next day? And this will just go in a straight line up like this? Of course, it would be very nice. But if thinking logically, perhaps not. I think that it's at least possible that after the excitement is over and this starts trading and then not that much happens, perhaps the first days or weeks, there could be a feeling of like now what so if that happens today 46,800, perhaps it pumps a little bit higher 50 60 who knows but perhaps then now what feeling starts setting in and the billions are not coming in yet could there be a retracement then i think it's at least possible the first obvious major support level is this 40k level that i have drawn here the next massive support is the 30k level is it possible that it retraces all the way to 40k or even 30k in technology the extreme outcomes are always possible so if this happens if we get the retracement to 40k support that holds or even to 30k support that holds those could be the entry opportunities of 2024 from a technical analysis perspective i'm not saying anything revolutionary here guys it's support and resistance this are 100 year old principles i'm just translating it into the chart that is unfolding in front of us then if you watched my next video after that a couple of days ago when price was 42,400 i highlighted that there's a lot of bitcoin left in grayscale which concerned me and i said that i think that question will boil down to the gbtc outflows which we can monitor which is great so let's do that and that outflow continued just as i suspected but there is still a lot of btc left here even today now this shows a balance of 551,000 btc i'm not sure that is completely accurate but it's very close to what grayscale themselves write on their homepage: 552,000 btc and that is as of 22nd which was yesterday and the day seven outflow from gbtc of minus 640 million dollars was actually the biggest ever if we're looking from day one to day six the previous highest outflow was on day six which was last friday of minus 590 million still the inflows are huge here's the blackrock iShares plus 272 million fidelity plus 158 million so day seven total flows if this is complete and correct is only minus 76 million dollars which is in line with the previous couple of days but imagine guys if the gbtc outflows weren't there these are enormous volumes look at the total flows here so in isolation the new etfs are an enormous success perhaps the biggest etf launch success ever and they have acquired a lot of btc the total is more than half of micro strategies in just seven days but if pigs could fly now the outflows have been there one source of the outflows as james highlighted in our dca yesterday is this ftx sold about 1 billion dollars worth of grayscales bitcoin etf explaining much of the outflow so that's about 1 billion and that outflow is done now but still 
Total outflows are minus 3.5 billion. So this is only 1 billion. So there are other sellers. Of course we can look at other macro factors as well. There it's a mixed bag. Yields have not been supportive of speculative assets. Because it actually held the support. Where just 10 days ago it looked like it was breaking this support. And DXY2 held support. So stronger USD. The denominator in the Bitcoin versus USD chart. On the other hand stocks have pumped breaking out of this key level and usually speculative assets are positively correlated. But gold rejected once again and usually physical gold and digital gold have been positively correlated in the past one year plus. So a mixed bag here in macro so I cannot find any more useful clues there right now. So I still think that price action of Bitcoin will boil down to what happens here in the grayscale BTC reserve. Because the inflows on the ETFs are there, buyers exist, so it boils down to what are the sellers doing? And I thought of one thing yesterday, just before the live stream. If you were a giant whale and you have giant whale bodies and you together hold a huge chunk of this BTC and you now want to get out of this construction and into lower fee alternatives, the new ETFs, and perhaps also secure your profits, what would you do? Of course, you could just sell them and buy another ETF the next day. That's fine. But why not sell first, all of you and your bodies, if you have enough funds to pressure down the price? And then once the price is lower and panic starts setting in so other people sell, that's when you start buying back. That seems smarter, doesn't it? I don't know the nature of these holders, but my guess is that this is exactly what is going on. This is not all explained by FTX. My main scenario one remains intact. We got the pump to almost 50,000, 49,102. Then we got the dump to 40k support. Now that support seems to be breaking. Either that's a fake to flush out all the stuff stops which no doubt are placed here just below 40k, about where we are now. Then the next massive support is here at 30k. I put it at 30,760, but could be some front running of course. The only thing I'll perhaps add, which was an idea from another trader, that could happen is this sort of diagonal parabola that could provide some support. I'm not a huge fan of diagonal lines, but the reason I did like that thought is that there are volume peaks here at 37,800 approximately, which coincides with this parabola. Last video, there was someone saying that Ah, but you're not predicting the price, it's just this or that. So this is all useless. But that is actually wrong. You can absolutely action a scenario based approach. That guy, because it's always a guy writing something like that, forgot that there is also a position sizing involved. So instead of buying here at the laser eye euphoria after the trading start, if my main scenario is that the pump will fade and then will dump and will either bounce at 40k at 37,500 or at around 30k. I don't know which one, but I believe that it will bounce at some point. Then I can for example spread out my new entries between those three points. If one entry hits, great. If two entries hit, even better. If three hit, great. The ones that don't hit I can use for some other setup. Also, 40k hasn't convincingly held yet in my opinion. Maybe it will, I'm just not convinced yet. So I haven't taken any new entries yet. Remember that our process entries are all the way down here. Okay, then what if the situation completely changes? Nothing holds. Okay, then it's a completely different situation. Then I'll need to pull those new entries at a small loss then. But that's okay. The earlier main process entries from 17,433 from 21k are still going to exit in great profit in that case. Unless Bitcoin completely breaks overnight, which I just don't think is going to happen. It's much more difficult to lose overall with a position size based strategy like this. Of course, you won't get the same gain as if you 
nail it 10x or 100x long with all your money at exactly the right point. I just don't think that I or anyone else can do that with any consistency. So sooner or later that strategy will blow out the whole account. It becomes the turkey's well-being chart in the life of a Thanksgiving turkey. That strategy can work great many times, but then comes the surprise. Someone wrote to me on X that this or that guy had nailed the exact local top with a massive leverage short and said his own trade was like a Ferrari when comparing with my lagging process. I'm sure he's right and I'm happy for his great trade. But the thing is that I don't want to drive a Ferrari on snowy icy winter roads. I want a reliable car with a huge trunk where I can fit big bags and that reliably will take me to my destination. If I were 19 years old I'd go for the Ferrari. If I slide off the ice and crash the car so be it then. I'll have to go back to work and earn new money to pay for the repairs. I could take huge risks. But where I am in my life now, that's not the right process for me. I'd rather trade some of the maximum speed or profits for a higher probability to arrive at a great outcome. And there is another aspect also. What this person might not realize is that if you take a lower risk in percent, you can enter with more money for the same dollar value risk taken. So you can enter the trade with more money then even if the percentage gain is less, you can still make more money overall all else equal. But this is a bit advanced concept. I hope to see you on the course with Lars Online. Watch out for scammers guys. The website is ctolarsson.com and nothing else. If you have taken the course, I hope to see you on Pro if you want to go even deeper with the altcoins. And if you get it within the window, it's 50% off for life. I was gonna do a different studio setup today, but I started the day by cutting both fingers instead of one of the lamps. So that will have to wait until tomorrow. So today I think I deserve a like and subscribe. Thank you Tak. CTO Larsson out.